the year of our Lord, 1458. 733 years after the Moors invaded Spain. 271 years since the Muslims recaptured Jerusalem. And five years after the fall of Constantinople to the Turk. Il Papa! Salve me! Salve me! Dio! Salve me! I'm sorry, Senora. It's important. I have been sent by Cardinal Orsini to fetch Your Excellency. Who are you? Bishop Giuliano della Rovere. That's good for you. And you can go now, Bishop. I'm sorry. You must go now. Must I? Yes. You must go directly to the Vatican Palace. Now. Not that I intend to go anywhere, but can you please explain why must I? Cardinal Orsini wants to discuss a matter in regards to your uncle's health. You'll stand by me, won't you? If... If what? If my world changes. And not for the better. You speak as if I'm obligated to you. I am obligated to you. I'm not your wife. Yes, you are. In effect. You're a cardinal of the Holy Catholic Church, and cardinals are not permitted to marry. so don't play with me. You have to stay by my side. I need you. I need to know that you're there for me. I have to go. Rodrigo, wait. If they kill you, I will light a candle in San Giacomo degli Spagnoli and pray for your soul. And if you flee to Spain, I will write letters and sign them your devoted Vanozza. And if you stay in Rome, I will wait for you here in my bed. Our bed. Farewell. I will. He is a fool. A well-established one. But that makes you a fool's woman. I am that. You don't have to be that. Are you trying to tempt me, Senor de la Rovere? Bishop de la Rovere. Shall we send all the gold and silver in the chancery to safety? And where would that be? Tell the captain of the guard to engage every Spanish fighter he can find in Rome. Pedro! Brother? Is Don Alonso dead? No. Not yet. I want 10,000 golden ducats put in traveling chests. Now.
Holy Father. Pedro Luis. Rodrigo. They must retake the city. Causing a law, Sweeney. Seeing that our beloved Holy Father Calixis will not be tormenting us with his mortal presence much longer. I'm interested to hear your plans, Cardinal Vice-Chancellor. I don't know exactly. Well, surely even you have given some thought to your uncle's demise? Yes, but I'm dependent on the actions of the other Cardinals. Not the other Cardinals. The real Cardinals. I am a real Cardinal. Destuteville is a real Cardinal. He has the King of France behind him. Pietro Barbo is a real cardinal. He has the support of the Venetian Senate. My family have 5,000 men at arms within a day's ride of Rome. And I am the Captain General of the Church's army. Colonel Borgia, you have never acted directly against my interests, so I will give you some advice. Flee to safety in Spain now. I can hardly remember Spain. I'm sure you can work your way back to the Holy See someday. Once you've made the right friends at court, or whatever you call it in Catalonia, we are not going anywhere. Your brother's decision to remain in the city will please the many Romans anxious for revenge after three years of Catalan repression. Adios, Capitan General. This could be our last chance. Do we try to stay in Rome or go right now? We are staying. I think too much hate has built up against all things Spanish, Pedro. The Italians don't hate us so much as envy us. The Orsini are mobilizing every man they've got in the Campagna. That's it. What? Holy Father Calixus III of blessed memory is in the hands of his lord. Don Alonso. Don Alonso. Don Alonso. I'm leaving. But not so. Rome has become too dangerous for me, and I'm on my way to Spain. But not so, please answer me. But not so, I need to talk to you. We have to go now. Decided. My future is here in Rome. And what do you plan to do between now and the start of the conclave? 
Sit in your garden and read poetry? It's her, isn't it? Found him. Yes, Your Excellency. He escaped Rome, but is in Ostia, a waiting ship for Spain, suffering from a fever. Mm. <laughs> oh, je. Have you lost your red hat? I thought it best to keep it hidden till the conclave. For safety. Mind if I join you? Please. Well, let the conclave decide his fate. And his brother? I expect Pedro Luis to succumb to his malady in Ostia, but be discreet. We don't know who the next pope will be. Welcome to your first conclave. You are a fortunate man, Cardinal Borgia. How so, Cardinal Orsini? You're alive. And why should being alive be considered a matter of good fortune? Ask your brother. I'm sorry? Take care how you vote in this conclave, Vice-Chancellor. The future depends on it. Particularly yours. Vice Chancellor Borgia, may I have a private word with you? Of course. Your uncle, Calixtus of blessed memory, chose in a typical display of his wisdom to make you his nephew, Cardinal Vice-Chancellor of the Roman Catholic Church throughout the world. That makes you the highest ranking cardinal in this conclave of the Sacred College. And therefore, technically speaking, it is your responsibility to take charge of these proceedings. Go on. I have nothing more to add. The lords of the church gathered here to select God's high priest of the Christian faith await your instruction. Cardinal de Stadville, I accept that I lack experience in certain ecclesiastical matters such as the direction of a conclave attended by so many cardinals superior to me in every way except official rank. Therefore, and even though I hold the office of Cardinal Vice-Chancellor, I request that you, the senior cardinal in terms of years of service, direct the proceedings of this conclave 
in a manner consistent with its rules and traditions. No. Lord Calixtus III, Pontifex Maximus, Jesus Christ our Savior's vicar on earth, ruler of the world, father of princes and kings, shepherd of the Holy Roman Church and leader of all Christendom, has been delivered from this temporal life and is now in the hands of the Lord. May God have mercy upon his soul and see fit to welcome him into the company of saints and angels in heaven, as he has welcomed so many other souls who before Calixtus shouldered the earthly burden of the keys of St. Peter. Please, Join me in a silent prayer for our father Calixtus of blessed memory. There are five ways a new pope may be chosen. The first is by committee, meaning that the Sacred College does not directly choose the new pope, but instead appoints a committee of cardinals with the power to name the new pope. The second way is known as inspiration. If any man amongst us is inspired by God to shout out the name of the new pope, then that man will become Pope as long as the required majority of two-thirds also feel so inspired to shout out that man's name. The third method of selecting the new Pope is called adoration. That is when a cardinal amongst us sees the light of the Lord appear in another cardinal and falls down at that man's feet in adoration. If a required majority of two-thirds also sees that light, then he who is so adored becomes Christ's vicar on earth. The fourth and the most common method of selecting the new pope is by scrutiny. Scrutiny is when each cardinal names his chosen candidate on a piece of paper. That ballot must clearly state the name of each cardinal's choice for Pope, as well as the name of the cardinal who is making that choice. For example, I, Guillaume de Stouteville of Rouen, name Alain d'Avignon as Holy Father of the Church. Once everyone has written down the name of his preferred candidate, the ballots are deposited in a chalice. And the teller, in this case me, counts the votes. If no man achieves the required majority, there is a second or a third ballot, or as many as are necessary. The fifth and the last method of electing the new father of the church is by accession. Accession takes place when the voting continuously fails to reach the required majority, and the deadlock is broken by a cardinal or cardinals proclaiming out loud that they accede to a cardinal other than the one they voted for, which normally means switching their support to the cardinal with the most votes. If enough additional cardinals also accede to a cardinal to allow him to reach the required majority, then that man will become Pope. I have not seen it happen before. And nor do I expect that this time we will make our selection either by a committee, by inspiration, or by adoration. I suggest that we proceed forthwith to make our choice by scrutiny. And I recommend that we hold the first and hopefully the only ballot one hour after midday repast. And I pray that we all accept Jesus Christ our Lord's guidance in our selection of his vicar on earth.
Sandinans, the knife, the jar, and fill the bucket with water. But that is prospects. Not good. Holy Mary, Mother of God, I pray that my brother Pedro has returned safely to Spain. I pray that you bless my beloved Bonazza and help her understand that I am and will always be her one and only true love. I pray that you guide me in this conclave by helping me elect the candidate who will keep you alive. Yesterday you were trying to kill my brother and I, and today you're looking for my vote. No, I'm not looking for your vote. What then? Much more than that. I want you to be my man of mouth and hands. Your future will be secure, no matter what the outcome of this conclave. Rodrigo, what are you doing? He has become my vassal. Borgia will love and serve no other, and will forever have my protection. Is this true, Rodrigo? Have you done homage to Latino Orsini? Betrayal is death. Becoming Orsini's man is death too, at the hands of my family. I have said nothing. I am the man of King Juan of Aragon, and no other. Very well. You had your chance. Listen, I believe we can hear men at arms. I wonder whose they could be. Could they be Spanish? No. Spain is very far away, and I'm sure I would have already fainted from the stink if they were Catalans. <laughs> <laughs> there are four Spanish gardeners in this room. How can you hope for their support if you slander them so? I do not hope for their support. I know I will not be made Pope, so I can talk as I want. Which is why I am the only one talking. <laughs> we will never again make the mistake of electing a Spanish Pope. And I know the next Holy Father will not be me. But let's be realistic. The tiara will only be won with either the support of the Orsini faction or by the backing of my family. There is no other possibility. Unless he's a Greek. <laughs> Oh, I'm sad to say that this college is unlikely to elect a Greek, even one long converted to the Latin rite. And you will never elect a Russian. Sir? So? Who will it be? Let us begin the dialogue. The next pope will be French. Do you propose that we make you pope, Allah of Avignon? Of course not. And we will also not vote for a Spaniard. The Orsini here expect us to elect one of their party. The Colonna equally believe that their house will deliver the next Holy Father. The losing family will go to war if we choose a partisan of the other, possibly destroying the church. These two noble Italian families, although of importance here in the patrimony of St. Peter, 
They pale in the shadow of the greatest power in the world, a power that commands respect and fear to secure its future. The Holy See must ally itself with France by electing Cardinal Guillaume d'Estoutville of Rouen, the next Pontifus Maximus. <laughs> Gentlemen! <clears throat> Cardinal Restoville, what say you? Cardinal Alain d'Avignon is correct, in one respect at least. It has been just 40 years since the dark days when our beloved church was divided under two popes, both claiming to be the true heir of Saint Peter. The power and the prestige of the papacy has only recently recovered from this schism and still rests on a weak foundation. Therefore, the very survival of the church weighs heavily on the shoulders of the cardinals gathered here in conclave today. It is an evident truth that my good friend, the King of France, is essential to the church's future. It is also true that I am the longest serving cardinal and have the most experience in the complex politics of the Holy See, but I cannot claim to be the best man to lead the Christian flock. That is a decision that we, with God's guidance, must make together. I agree with the two cardinals from France. Uh, we will not elect a Spaniard, a Greek, or the bishop of Kiev. And we're always under pressure to crown an Orsini or Colonna partisan. And the Holy See's relationship with the King of France is certainly of great importance. Therefore, it is only logical that we elect a Frenchman. So let us choose uh, Alain of Avignon and be done with it. <laughs> but I do not believe that Alain d'Avignon desires to put himself forward as a candidate. Am I correct? How can I uh, put my name forward if there's one man amongst us so clearly superior in education, royal connections, experience, family, grace, and uh, wealth? How does wealth matter? It does not matter at all. Although I have been blessed with great wealth, I will, if elected, of course, dispose of all my earthly possessions and benefices with the help and advice of the sacred Claudine. I agree that uh, Cardinal de Stutfield is superior to any of us in education, experience, family connections, and wealth. And very blue blood does indeed flow through his thick veins. I'm not sure about his having much grace, but I'm quite certain that he's far superior to any of us in the enormity of his arrogance. He also wears more rings on his fingers and dresses in finer cloth. His farts smell like perfume. And I hear that his sweat would make the finest of wines, but it, no one has ever sampled it because uh, Cardinal Destutville has never sweated. <laughs> <laughs> I can assume from your tone, Cardinal Piccolomini, that you do not support my candidacy. Which faction, then, do you suggest? Colonna or Orsini? Neither. I suggest we choose a man who believes in God. <laughs> Someone who will do Jesus Christ, our Savior's work, and not the King of France's work, or the Kings of Spain. I suggest that we choose Silvius Aeneas Piccolomini of Siena to be the Holy Father of the Roman Catholic Church. But that is you. You are nominating yourself. I am. Putting my own name forward, yes. Not because I think that I'm the best possible choice in all Christendom. I can think of many better men, but none of them happen to be sitting in this room right now. And you know very well that if you elect me, I will devote myself to the task of shepherding the Christian flock and nothing more. I will try to be fair, and I will always be direct. And I 
will never play political games or feign false humility while a venomous puppy speaks for me. I thank you for your bluntness, Cardinal Piccolomini. Quality typical of a man of your rustic background and limited experience in the complex politics of the Holy See. But ah, a humble origin and an uncontrolled tongue with the right credentials to be made the Holy Father of Kings and Princes. That we will decide in one hour. Look at what you started. Thank you. And who will you support? I will support the men who will best lead the church. A very political answer. It is a very political moment. Mm. I will support the man who will pay me the most. You don't mean that. Of course not. I'm just having a little fun. <laughs> Come, my friend. Let's see if we can find ourselves a generous share of the grace needed to guide us in our choice. Cardinal de Stutville would like to have a private word with the Cardinal Borgia. And me? But you as well, in a moment. But first, His Excellency wants to complete his business with the Cardinal Nephew. My title is Cardinal Vice Chancellor, not Cardinal Nephew. Forgive me for my simple minded error, but you know I am not as sharp as the rest of you, am I? Is your ring or your foot? After the scrutiny, you will kiss my foot, my knee, and my hand, as will the others. Borgia, I will be direct. If Piccolomini is made Pope, you will lose your cardinal's hat at best. How can you say that? Because he knows exactly what kind of man you are. What kind of man am I? An ambitious one. But this morning you gave some indication, the first I have seen, that you may be gifted with some uh, practical sense. And I am thinking that you can be of use to me in the great task that lies ahead. So I shall say this to you once. 
If you vote for me at the scrutiny, I will allow you to remain Vice-Chancellor of the Georgia until such time as you betray my trust. And you should know that attending to his family's financial health within reason will not put my Cardinal Vice-Chancellor in any disfavor. I am very happy you express such confidence in me. But how can I know for sure that once you're made Pope, you will not change your mind and award the Vice Chancellorship to another? Do not insult me, Borgia. I'm not a pig farmer from Siena. I'm a man of my word. And I intentionally held back my decision as to whom I would make a Vice Chancellor as a bargaining instrument. You speak as if the Vice Chancellorship was the payment for my vote. Would it be right for me to support a man who attempts to acquire the keys of St. Peter through simony? Borja, I'm going to assume that you are one who understands, as opposed to one of the multitude, and expose myself by revealing my true thinking. This sacred college is made up of a few practical men, like you and me, and a large number of fools, like Prospero Colonna and Calandrini of Bologna. Prospero is a fool, because everyone knows he will be bought by the richest cardinal, namely me. But when I buy him, it will be with the knowledge that his loyalty will always be to the man with the fattest purse. And there is always someone with a fatter purse. Calandrini is a fool because he is handicapped by the simplistic idea that the best man to sit on the throne of St. Peter is the cardinal who most outwardly demonstrates a sanctimonious piety. Calandrini and your cousin, the mayor, would blissfully drag the church backwards into the dark and primitive swamp of superstition from which we have only recently emerged. The church is the most powerful force for good in this world. It needs to be led by a strong and practical man who understands politics at the highest level. A man who, with the help of powerful monarchs and potentates, will fortify our church against the forces of evil that threaten us from every direction. I am that man. Do I have your Lord? And you understand that I cannot, of course, allow someone who does not fully support me to keep the office of Vice-Chancellor. So do I have your vote? Yes or no? Latino Orsini says that my future, if I have one, depends on how I vote. Is he in your camp? No. The Orsini have been seeking their revenge since the day my uncle broke tradition by naming Pedro Captain General instead of one of them. Any Orsini who dares to even think of murdering one of my cardinals will quickly find his castle besieged by a French army. A prospect we both know grips the never very brave Italian heart with mortal fear. You have my vote. Thank you. Borgia, I know you have no love for me, and likely never will. But I sincerely do believe that we have a common understanding of how things get done. We will work well together.
How much did you get? Are you accusing me of simony? Essentially, if not precisely, yes. Cardinal de Stuttville thinks that a practical man is best suited to lead the church. A practical man in the King of France's pocket, he means. I think you are going to lose. I see. And who will you support? I will support the man who will make the best pope. Have you agreed to vote for him? As I said, I will support. Have you agreed to vote for that perfume Parisian? Yes. Good. Now I know at least that you're capable of telling the truth. <sighs> the pompous ass of a Frenchman does indeed appear to be the practical choice for a man in your precarious position, and he's right. We do need practical men at the top of the church, but not as Pope. Has he got it? I don't know. No, he has not, and he never will, because I know there are at least eight men in this room who, like me, really do fear their God. Men who would roast at the stake before selling their vote to the King of France as lapdog. I remind everyone that to win, a cardinal must be named on 12 ballots. I must relay a message of utmost importance to Cardinal Borgia. You know, of course, the conclaves cannot be interrupted by anyone for any reason on pain of death. I know I could never speak to the Cardinal directly, but I hope that there was some way that someone could relay some information. What information? About his brother, the Captain General. You're a Catalan pig yourself, aren't you? And you were a captain of the city guard. Oh, yes. Nine votes for Cardinal de Stutiville of Rouen. Six for Cardinal Piccolomini of Siena. Two for Cardinal Orsini of Rome. And uh, one that is difficult to read, but appears to say Cardinal Calandrini of Bologna. I am laying with the gout. So I shouldn't be too harsh on the Frenchman, but he's getting so frail, his eyesight is failing. <laughs> <laughs> Cardinal de Stutiville Rouen has received the largest number of votes, but he has not yet reached the required majority. 
Any cardinal who voted against Cardinal Destouteville of Rouen may accede to him now. We have not yet reached the required majority. I suggest that we seek God's guidance and that we hold a second ballot one hour after our evening meal. Save some rope for your Spanish cardinal. <laughs> so we six voted for Cardinal de Stutville, plus Louis, plus one. have we here? I'm sorry to interrupt your conference, but I've got some foul business of my own to conduct here. So again, it's us six plus Louis plus one of the two other Spanish cardinals. And the Greek, but not the Bishop of Kiev. They are splitting their vote as a stratagem until someone comes forward with a convincing plan to retake the city of Constantinople. Do that and we've got ten. Another two and you've got the tiara. Piccolomini seems to have made good on some old friendships. And surprisingly for a man who entered the church so late in life, he has successfully pulled most of the old-fashioned cardinals onto his team, including your countryman, Juan de Mea. Bring him in. What about Cardinal Orsini? Latino Orsini is biding his time before delivering himself to Piccolomini. And the saintly cardinal from Siena is going to pay very dearly for his vote. But you can deliver me, your countryman. How? You are not a cardinal nephew anymore. Your uncle can no longer open doors for you. You have to open them for yourself. Use your wits. Use your brain. Prove yourself. I will try. You will not try. You will succeed. That adds up to 11. Pietro Babo voted for Piccolomini, and he is about as much a man of God as my chamber pot. He is a merchant, Cardinal, a spider, waiting for the next piece of succulent prey to fall into his net. He deserves nothing. So what will we give him, then? Whatever it takes. 
I should have held out a little longer. You will enjoy living in my house. It is the finest palace in Rome. Other than the Vatican. And Barbo makes 12. Gentlemen, let us get to work. You will not fail me. I will have all four Spanish rows. Oh. The wind will start to blow in an unfavorable direction for you. So, Cardinal Stuttgart sent you to fetch my boat. May I walk with you? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He suspects that you are hidden Cardinal Piccolomini, but would like to know if he has any chance of your support. Hmm. Cardinal Piccolomini is vain, short-tempered, rough-mannered, and impetuous, but he's intelligent, well-read. And a man of God. And what about Cardinal de Stutville? Cardinal Stutville is a very capable man. Dear cousin, I consider a vote for Cardinal Piccolomini to be a vote for the Orsini clan, who hate all things Spanish. Silvia Cineas Piccolomini a Siena is not an enemy of Spain. But I see in this conclave the perfect opportunity to end the dispute between France and Spain over the crown of Naples. And you think making Cardinal Stutevill Pope will improve Spain's position in Naples? Yes, as long as we can get him to commit to something now. Our making the right choice today can prevent a war between France and Spain. A war that can lead to untold misery, a war that must weigh heavily on our consciences when we cast our ballots. This sacred college is a symbol to express God's will in choosing Christ's vicar on earth. Our actions here will weigh heavily on our day of judgment. But what uh, type of specific promise could we get from the Frenchman? I can ask him to guarantee in writing that the right to the crown of Naples remains in the Spanish royal line. Rodrigo Borgia. You will die either a notorious criminal or seated on the throne of St. Peter. Perhaps they wanted the same thing. They are not. I think so, but I'm not certain. Why are you not certain? My cousin cannot be bought. He believes that Piccolomini is closer to his god than you are and will not be persuaded otherwise. But he is also deeply devoted to his royal patrons in Spain. I believe you will have his boat if you can make the king of France quit his claim to the crown of Naples. Then that will be promise. I'm not sure he believes you can deliver on such a promise. Make him believe it. Then what should I tell him you said to me? Tell your cousin that as Cardinal Vice Chancellor in charge of the church's finances throughout the world, that you will be in a better position than any man on this earth to bring benefit in Spain and influence the King of France through his friend the Pope. And tell your cousin that the Cardinal nephew will not remain the Cardinal Vice Chancellor unless he writes my name on his ballot. My saying that will not secure his vote. The opposite, I am sure. Don't be simple. I said that for your benefit, not his. Whatever is promised must come directly from you and not from me as your envoy. I told you to secure his vote. I did not tell you to ask me to do it. I have prepared the ground. I can speak for you, but I cannot be you, Cardinal de Stutville. Do not say a word, and 
as I look directly at you. Please enter. I am sorry, Colonel Dumea. I apologize for my intrusion. No, no, no. Please join me, Colonel Stutter. I've been waiting for you. Colonel Dumea, I will be direct with you. France and Spain may dispute the throne of Naples, but it is a fief of the Holy See, and therefore its king rules at the Pope's pleasure. We are both the sons of ancient and noble families, and I give you my solemn oath as a nobleman that I can and will stay the King of France's claim to the Kingdom of Naples for my lifetime. And this I shall do, not for the friendship of Spanish cardinals, but because, as Pope, it is my duty to prevent the bloodshed of Christian by Christian. I am uh, sorry for disturbing you, and I apologize if my passion has been too heated. He talks as if he's already Pope. He soon will be. So may I ask you, does the Pope-to-be have your vote? Monsignor's finally declared himself a Piccolomini, but Calandrini has agreed to vote for Destro to Vell. Calandrini? Why? Well, he may be a pious man, but like any true Bolognese, he'd rather drink water from Bologna than wine from Siena. He's a huge catch. Destro de Vell has it, then. We made the right choice. Cardinal de Stutiville, 10. Cardinal Piccolomini, 8. No cardinal has reached the required majority. I, Cardinal de Stutiville, have received the greatest number of votes. Any man who wishes to accede to me may do so now. Hold our next ballot tomorrow morning, immediately after Mass. Any objections? At the same 
nine volts as last time. Look, Colonel Calentries. But that merchant, Colonel Pietro Barbo, and the Russian, did not vote as promised. The beheaded cannot be trusted. And nor did your cousin, the mayor. My cousin did not promise to vote for you, just to consider it. I gave you the job of bringing him in, and you failed me. Maybe the mayor made a previous arrangement to vote for Piccolomini in this round, and we'll pick him up in the next. The Greek and the Russian we know will both vote for the man who they think will launch a crusade, which means you have yet to convince them. Everything is all up in the air. Anyone could change their vote in the next ballot, even for all we know, Alan Davenport. Oh, you listen to me! Don't be ridiculous with me! To ascertain exactly who will vote for whom before the next ballot, there can be no more sitting on the fence. I want my enemies to seal their fates now, before they realize that I have won the crown. I hope for your sake that Prospero is right. And that the mayor does cast his vote for me this time. I will ask my cousin how he will vote. And I will ask Pietro Babo again, but we cannot trust his answer. Cousin de Stadville? Yes. I am not confident I can deliver my cousin. He is not a man whose convictions are easily changed. But with your permission, I will try to deliver the vote of another. And who might that be? Cardinal Piccolomini. If I can persuade him that he can never win, would it not make sense for him to back you instead of carrying on this useless campaign till the end? No, 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 it's gone too far. He will not support us. The young Catalamini, right? Piccolomini will never truly support my candidacy, but in the past he has demonstrated some signs of practicality, and a practical man will always try to lessen the sting of a certain defeat. Then I will accompany the cardinal nephew. Piccolomini will not listen to you, Alain. Cardinal Borgia is young, has no history. Good or bad. Deliver me, either your countryman, the mayor, or Piccolomini. One or the other will do. For the Frenchman. You are not considering the needs of Spain. I am not voting on behalf of Spain. I'm voting on behalf of God. If Cardinal Estutivel was the greatest enemy of Spain, but loved and feared his God, I would vote for him. What about fealty to your king? Does your oath mean nothing? My king's was an oath of fealty to the same God as I do each and every day. Tell me honestly, am I wasting my time with you? Yes. But you are, you are a clever and ambitious young man. You'll have an interesting future. But you will not change my vote. Cardinal de Maria can ask you one favor. What? Keep your intentions secret. Tell them that you will vote according to your conscience, and that only God and you are to know the name you place in the ballot. They will easily deduce how I am going to vote. Of course. But suspecting how you're going to vote is quite different from knowing. I would like you to keep them uncertain until you place your ballot. Will you do that for me? I will not tell you. How I place my vote is a matter between myself and my God. Thank you. You're a good man. In the future, I will try to follow in your footsteps. Well, what have we here? A cardinal nephew desperately trying to preserve his wealth? Or is it his hide? May I discuss some possibilities with you? Possibilities, impossibilities, anything you want. In private. I hope you'll not be offended if I remain seated. Not at all. Good. Come and sit down. <laughs> Many years ago, when I was on a diplomatic mission to the King of Scotland, my ship was overcome by a 
terrible tempest. I prayed to the Virgin and promised her that if I ever made land again, I would walk barefoot directly to our nearest shrine and pay alms. And Our Lady saw to it that the ship was saved. But unfortunately for me, the nearest shrine was many miles away, through the snow. I managed to get there barefoot, but my feet develop gout, and they have never regained their full use. Cardinal Piccolomini, I want you to know that I'm not here on behalf of Cardinal de Stoudville. I am here on behalf of myself. I am listening. What's to be gained by your continued opposition to Cardinal de Stoudville's candidacy, if he's going to win in the end anyway? You will just succeed in making the new ruler of the church your enemy. But if you come to terms with him now... What terms? I, I don't know. Should that not come from you? I could relay your conditions to Cardinal de Stoudville if you request. That's very helpful of you. Uh, could you ask him if he'll promise me your job, the vice-chancellorship? I could ask him for that. You could ask him for it, but he can't give it to me. That is because he's already pledged it to another. And I don't mean you. That stung, didn't it? Whatever Cardinal Guillaume de Stutfield is, he is not stupid. He will not entrust the treasury of the Roman Catholic Church throughout the world to a 27-year-old Spaniard of little reputation. No. The vice-chancellorship will go to his loyal portal, Alain of Avignon. <laughs> Pointing out the obvious to the young and inexperienced is one of the few pleasures of growing old. You've hitched your team to the wrong wagon, Borgia. I am not doing very well for myself, am I? About as well as could be expected of a cardinal nephew, or should I call you cardinal boy? But we are stuck in deadlock. You cannot win, and Cardinal de Stutville can't lose. Yes, he can. No, he can't. His support is solid. No, it is not. And a conclave always goes somewhere. It cannot last forever. Are there no terms? I can propose to him. Hmm. You could propose that he take confessions in the Abbey of San Cristoforo in the Bremner Pass, and I take the job of Pope, and tell him San Cristoforo is a grim and miserable tower on top of a very high mountain, and that many a monk there has been known to freeze to death. You could have stuck my fingers any time in the last 15 years and had that worm put to a miserable death in the castello. So, let us review. Who do we have? Ten for sure, not including the mayor. You may still have his vote. He will not say. That is correct. I asked him. He told me he would vote according to his conscience and that the man's name is a matter just between himself and his guard. Keep working on him. And Barbo. Cardinal Calandrini, what of Barbo? He says his intentions are favorable to you. They better be. I just signed a note on behalf of the King of France promising him 200,000 golden ducats. But that is simony. It's the only language he understands. And in technical, proper canon law sense, it was not simony. I agreed to, to help him with a debt. Owed to him for diplomatic services he rendered some time ago. The Venetian spice trader is what he is. I cannot change his character. But I can put a better man in his place when I am made Pope. My reign will mark the end of Merchant Cardinals, the likes of Pietro Barbo. The Greek and the Slav Cardinals hold the keys to St. Peter. Swing them over to our side.
생각하십니까? 你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你们是一个人的人，你
Why are we dragging this out? We all know Cardinal Destutaville is going to win in the end, so let's get it over with. And if he's not going to win, let's get it over with anyway, so I can go home and relieve my aching bollocks! Do you think the Orsini's murdered my brother? I would not put it past them. May I speak my mind freely, Cardinal de Stutville? Cardinal Piccolomini says that you have promised the Vice Chancellorship to Alain d'Avignon. I have promised it only to you. But how do I know that you will not take it away from me after a short while, allowing you to technically keep your word and at the same time put the Vice Chancellorship into more trusted hands? Are you implying that you are not trustworthy? It is normal practice for a new pontiff to make a loyal countryman, if not a blood relative, Cardinal Vice Chancellor. Neither of which describes me. If my oath is not good enough for you, then perhaps my written word will be. If you decide to betray me at the last moment, and I am still elected Pope, you will lose my protection against the Orsinis. I'm sure that you are capable of imagining what will happen to you very quickly after that. Did you vote for me? No. Why not? I will not be in the same party and let you know, see. When a conclave divides into two factions, the Orsini go to one side, the Colonna the other. Both are equally repellent and, in effect, cancel each other out. I would happily trade the Orsini for the Colonna, but the Orsini are on my side because Prospero has sold his vote to Distopville in exchange for his palace. There is no love involved in either case. Oh. If Pietro Barbo and both Passarin and Isidore vote for Destu de Ville, but your cousin de Mayer does not, he'll still only have 11. It'll take another round to get his two-thirds majority. If he gets 11 votes, I'm sure the prevailing wind will quickly blow the 12th cardinal his way. The total is 
Cardinal de Stutteville. Ten. Cardinal Piccolomini. Eight. If any man who voted against the Cardinal with the most votes wishes to accede to him... I've never thought much of you, de Stutteville, but I never suspected you were a cheat. Let me see. Let me see. It's nine to nine. Let me see. It has my name on it, as any man can read who can see well enough to walk through the door of that chapel, which is exactly what you should do right now. I resent your tone, Cardinal Piccolomini. My eyesight is weak, that is well known. I have erred, and I apologize to you for any damage that my error might have caused. I am not damaged. You have been caught cheating, and you are the one that is damaged. Tell me, can we make a cheat, the Holy Father of the Church? I swear before God that I did not cheat. I, I cannot see well in this light, and I read the ballot incorrectly. A man will swear anything before a God he does not fear. A God whose wrath has no meaning for him. A God he does not believe in. Cardinal Piccolomini, you can accuse me fairly of many sins. But to accuse a cardinal of the Catholic Church of abandoning a God he has devoted his life to is an insult that lowers this conclave to a new and heretofore unknown level of baseness. It is not my accusation that has brought us to this level of baseness, but your actions! Very well. Let us behave like drunken peasants brawling over a cut of meat. It will be more comfortable for you, I am sure. It will! I prefer an honest fight to the lies, cheating and simony that is your noble way. How dare you accuse me of simony? How dare I? What about the paper that you gave Pietro Barber? Promising to pay him 200,000 golden ducats. Yes! But, Cardinal Barbo, do not forget the Florentine banking houses. And they have the signature of Edward, King of England. And did he pay? No. And the greatest banks in the world came down in ruin. <laughs> How do you propose to collect when the King of France chooses not to cover Destockville's debt? Will you go to Paris and seize it from him? Be careful before you reach too far, Friar from Siena. If you make an enemy of me, then you may also make the King of France an enemy of this holy see. And how long has it been since we had two popes simultaneously claiming the throne of St. Peter? Our divided church just barely escaped dangerous floodwater that can easily rise another day. We are powerful men who represent powerful interests. And we must weigh those interests carefully when we cast our votes. Fine and slippery words, but not an argument to make a cheat. The Supreme Pontiff of the Catholic Church! <laughs> In reference to your accusation of simony, it is beneath my dignity to respond to such a charge, except to say that the King of France owed the Cardinal from Venice such a sum before we entered this room, and that I, as a gentleman of honor, see no simony in agreeing to use my considerable influence to help a friend collect money fairly owed to him. And I need hardly point out that the King of France is the most honorable of men. Whereas I have never met an honorable Englishman since such a man does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen! We've had three bullets now and nothing much is changing. Will we have four, five, six, or nineteen, all with the same result? We can only proceed by accession.
I agree to proceed by accession. I agree also to accession. We are in deadlock. Two cardinals. Destutville of Rouen and Piccolomini of Siena have both received the same number of votes. Any cardinal who wishes to accede to the man that he did not vote for may do so until one man receives the required majority of two thirds, 12 votes, and becomes Christ's vicar on earth. Seat to the Cardinal from Siena. Cardinal from Siena. I accede to the Cardinal of Siena, and I make him Pope.
congratulations. What for, Cardinal Orsini? For having survived your first conclave. We start a new chapter now. Piccolomini of Sierra is Pope Pius II, and I am his Cardinal Vice-Chancellor. God is smiling on you, Rodrigo Borgia. Yes, he is. Are you 